Sarah Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter, and today I'm going to show you how to do some reverse masking. And here's a card that I made. We made some fake postage stamps, did the little fake layering, and um, some reverse masking. It's very easy. You have everything you need already if you're a stamper to do this. So um, you can check out the video and find out how to do it. Also, something else completely different. I think that we need to start a campaign to bring back French braids. I'm just braiding my hair today, and I'm very proud of myself, and I love it because it's so easy. So, um, are you with me? Do you want to bring back the French braids? If so, leave a comment, and I'll, I'll do a video I'll show you how to braid your hair like that. It's very, very easy, too. So, anyway, French braids, completely off topic, but um, let's figure out how to make this card, shall we? All right, check it out. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to cut a mask, and this is kind of like a reverse mask because instead of masking an object, you're going to mask off everything on your card that isn't your subject and where you want to stamp. So all you need to do is just use a gridded mat and an X-Acto knife, and you can cut out a grid, grid like this. You will need a metal edged ruler, just so you don't cut up your ruler. Or you can do what I did for this one and just use an electronic die cutter to simply cut a rectangle and four squares in the middle. And I cut the outside five by seven just so I could layer it on my card and I would know it's all lined up right. Now I have some masks that I made a um, many years ago, probably about eight or nine years ago, before I had a die cutter. I don't know if you can see this, maybe if I put paper behind it. This will make a sheet of postage stamps, just traditional rectangular postage stamps. And this would make kind of like the overseas triangular ones, which are kind of fun. And we'll use these in a bit too. And um, I cut these out of thin overhead um, office transparencies. So they last forever. Obviously they've lasted me eight or nine years. And uh, the paper ones will last quite a while too. But if you wanna you know, spend your time making something that will last you a long time, try an overhead um, office transparency. They cut really easily, much easier than like, you know, um, recycled plastic packaging, um, but they still will last you. And they're nice and thin, so they're really easy to, to work with. But I'm going to set these aside right now, and I'm going to show you how you can do some masking with this cardstock mask. And since it's, I did use cardstock rather than thin paper, just because I wanted it to last a little longer. And the first thing I'm going to do is line this up on my card. Now this is going the right way for me, um, but it's probably going to look upside down for you. But nonetheless, it's still going to be pretty easy to follow this technique. I have not folded my card yet because I want it to stay nice and flat. So what I'm going to use is a sponge applicator. And here, these are some I've had for years by Colorbox. There's just the, um, I think they're called the Colorbox Stylus. And they have these, they have white and black tips. Here are the black ones just to show you. And these would be, you would um, use these black ones, you would heat them with a heat gun and press them on a, on a stamp or a texture mat, just like we do with the bath blocks to make stamps. So those are really fun. Um, and a lot of kits come with both white and black, and that's the kits that I had. And I'm gonna grab a um, blue tip and see what I do. And the cool thing is you wanna keep, you don't wanna wash these out, you wanna keep using them for the same color and then you get so much color in here that it's very easy to blend when you want to. So I've got my blue tip. Now you could use a little tape to tape this in place. I'm not gonna bother with that, but if you feel it's moving around on you too much, you can. And I'm pressing my um, foam tip into my blue ink pad and this ink is a uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Broken China. And um, I'm just gonna kinda start off the mask and I'm just gonna blend in some color. I'm not doing a very good job, it's kinda splotchy, but you know what, maybe I'll work with that and make it look like clouds. Let's do that, let's make it kinda look like clouds here. And the nice thing about doing um, a mask like this where you're doing a one layer card is that you are going to be saving postage. It's not gonna cost extra to mail. You're gonna be saving your supplies because you're not using additional pattern paper, it's, and it's just fun. It looks great when it's done as well. So I'm just kind of tapping it in so I get a cloud look. Now I'm going to go with my green. This is crushed olive. Um, you know, this works really well with the Stampin' Up! ink pads too. Actually, I find I blend a little easier because my Stampin' Up! pads aren't so juicy. And I just want to kind of bring in a little bit of green on the bottom to ground the image. Just sweeping it up. You could take your time more. I would take my time a little bit more if I wasn't shooting a video, but it's still going to look good. So, you know, take your time, practice on scrap paper if you don't want to go right on a card, but 
but you know it's gonna look nice you don't have to worry too much about it and just to bring in a little bit of a blush color I'm gonna use my pink pink applicator and I'm just gonna draw to kind of rouge in a little bit of that pink from the side because I know I want to use some pink in my design so I just want to you know add harmony now by adding the color I can go right over the blue with the pink and it's gonna look pretty if I go over the green it's gonna get muddy because pink and green are opposites they make brown when you mix them so I'm just kinda blending it on any light area and also going into any blue just a little bit just to give it a little bit of color there alright now not only will this protect my card when I'm inking it'll also protect it when I'm stamping and I'm using this pretty uh, paper cut bird image from about art accents okay I'm gonna simply color my um, image with some markers here um, you could use an ink pad and save yourself some time I'm just gonna go in here and color my bluebirds blue using memento markers I really like them I'm gonna use green on the branches first I'll go in with my light colors I don't know if you can hear it on the camera or not, but my uh, my kids are upstairs and they're playing and I can hear them just giggling and hooting and hollering up there. It's so funny. I don't know if it's going to pick up or not, but in case you do hear anything like that, that's what it is. My kids are uh, hooting and hollering upstairs. That's so funny. Okay, and I'm just going very... That would be my furnace kicking on right now. Odd. I must have to heat up some hot water since we certainly don't need the furnace on the end of June. Get these flowers pink. I'm going to scribble off, uh, just in case I've gotten any dark green, I scribble it on the scrap paper to clean it. And, oh, I want some bright pink on some of those flowers. Now, because the mask we cut is cardstock, it is not going to be um, perfect you know it's a little thicker than what you generally would want on a mask if you're trying to stamp over it but it's still going to look nice and remember this is the background we're making here i'm going to breathe on the rubber and i'm just gonna press it down really good maybe i should have used my rocket block or mega mount that would have given me probably a little bit more push i don't know if my scorpel surface is the best surface for stamping but that's what i've got there and so I've done two right there, and I'm just going to stamp the other two and be back in a moment. Okay, so I've gotten all my little background squares stamped, and just for funsies, I'm going to put a little bit of Chinese calligraphy over the entire thing in black. Now, I don't know if you can really see the detail on the stamp, but it's this big calligraphy background, and it's got a big dragon medallion in the middle. I don't want that dragon medallion, but I love this calligraphy. So, uh, first of all, what I did was I, since it's Chinese calligraphy, I put an arrow on the back to show me what is up because I am so embarrassed whenever I stamp something upside down, especially in a language that I don't read. So, um, so I have that arrow up telling me that I want to make sure the calligraphy, my stamp is pointing that way when I'm stamping it. And I'm just taking some of this black ink and I'm just going to ink up the top half of the stamp. And I've got it on my Mega Mount because I know I'll get a better impression if I try to stamp it with that. And then I'm just going to stamp that over the top part of my design. And I'm going to push it in really hard because I've got that cardstock mask and that might give enough space that it doesn't transfer really well. So I've got to make sure I'm really putting the pressure down. Oh, that stamped really well. And oh, I'm going to leave my mask in place and I'm going to do that to the bottom part. And that's one of the reasons I cut my window. I cut the mask so it would be 5 by 7 so that I would protect the rest of my card front if I got any um, over stamping. I didn't want it to ruin my whole card. So again, just inking up the top half where it's got the calligraphy I want. And I'm going to roll it over the, uh, the bottom holes in my mask. Whoops, I just moved it. Let's hope that uh, <laughs> that's all right. All right, that looks pretty cool. Now if I want, I can go in with a marker. A black pen would look really cool. I don't have a black pen with me right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab my blue since it's the darkest I have. And I'm just going to kind of outline, maybe even put a few dashes. I just think it might give it a little pretty definition. Because it does give it a little fuzzy edges sometimes. And this will just make it kind of pop a little bit. Now, 
I just, I love this technique because you don't have to have any fancy materials. And I'm going to show you something else that's really fun that you certainly don't need any fancy materials for. And that would be a torn paper mask. And this is also referred to sometimes as faux layering. So what you do is just take a piece of scrap paper. This is where I scribbled off my marker. And you tear it in a rough strip. And then you want to place it on your card where you'd like the appearance of a faux layer. And I'm also going to take the other part of that and just set it there so I don't get any ink on the back of my card. And then you just want to choose a color that you like. And um, I think that I'll go with green. And I'm just going to use my blending tool here. And I'm going to just blend it. I'm not going to worry about getting any ink on my um, cutting mat because I can easily wipe that away. Ah, there we go. I've gotten that edge so I can let that move. And I'm just going to, oh, my hand's probably in the way too. I'll hold, let me turn that around. That'll be easier to see if I turn it around because then my hand will be in the way. And I'm just going to keep keep blending it. Oh my goodness. Lots of noises from the upstairs of this house. My kids are on summer vacation, you see. Now, another cool thing. Now, you can use a brayer, too. That's how I've seen it done before, but it just seems like it wastes a lot of ink when I use a brayer to do that. And I'm going to slide it up just a hair so I offset it. And then if I just sweep a little bit of the um, uh, blender pad without adding more ink, I'll get that nice faux layer. See, doesn't that look cool? Now, I could stamp that calligraphy on it again. That would be really pretty, I think. I'm just going to slide my mask down a little bit like that. I'm going to turn, I'm stamping this upside down now, so I'm going to turn it around so that it's right set up on your, for your side. There. And put a little bit on that. I know I shouldn't rock it back and forth, but... I think I'm going to catch the edge of my score pal if I do that. I'm going to slide it over a little bit. And you know what? A little ink on the inside of my card isn't going to kill anybody, so I'm not going to worry about that. All right, so there we have, I'll fold it up so you can see, the little faux layer there. That's kind of cool looking. Now, I want to show you how to make some faux postage because this is such a fun technique and I really love doing it. And um, I'm going to find my masks here. It's kind of hard sometimes because they're very clear once you've, um, once you've cut them out of acetate. They're kind of hard to see. So you could start off by spraying this with a little glimmer mist or whatever. Or you could just do some sponging. You can stipple it on like that. I try to make a bunch of same. It's just, um, it's easy and it looks really nice. Oh my gosh, they are giggling. I don't know if you can hear that, but the kids are upstairs just laughing their buns off over something. I think they're all playing a game of Wii Baseball. Okay, and here I'm just sponging. Now you take more time, of course, you know, doing it on your own. I'm just trying to get in there quickly because I hate to do really long videos because I know people, very few people have time to watch a 20 minute video on masking. All right, so that's kind of pretty. It's just very simple. Now I'm going to grab a few very simple stamps. And um, what I have here is I got a little butterfly. I've got some ginkgo leaves. I'm going to go with the ginkgo leaves and just my regular ink pad. Actually, this is my distress ink pad. I generally don't use the distress inks for stamping because um, I really, they kind of, if you can kind of see, they kind of bead up a little bit. The ink just beads up there and I don't like that so much, but you know, for this, you know what? It's going to, it's going to do, it's going to have to do. And I think maybe I'll stamp every other one with the ginkgo leaves. And uh, interesting to know, I did not practice this before I sat down to stamp. I just figured I'm making a card. I'm going to do a video while I'm at it. No rhyme or reason. And now I'm going to get this um, little butterfly stamp. And I'm going to stamp with, uh, I think I'll just use that pink that I have here. I hope it's dark enough to show up. If not, we'll have to uh, 
you know what I'm gonna do the pink and then I'm gonna kind of roll the edges of it in that blue that we, we were using so we'll get maybe a little purple on there let's see how that looks it's not very dark hmm you know what I'm gonna change my mind I'm gonna do all ginkgo leaves because I don't have another ink pad color here handy and I'm just sometimes you just gotta roll with it stamp right over that butterfly there actually you know what on that butterfly one that didn't stamp very well I have a pretty a nice a little um, peace and harmony sentiment and I'm gonna stamp that in black right over that butterfly that'll almost look like I did it on purpose I should have told you I just did it on purpose because you wouldn't know the difference if I didn't tell you probably I'll stamp that right in the center. That looks kind of cool. All right, so you could outline this. You could stay. You could write like you know, forty-two cents or whatever you want on there. But I'm just going to move ahead to the next step, and that would be trimming it out with the postage scissors. And these are by Fiskars. Um, they're just stamp edge scissors, and I'm just going to trim along the outside of this whole panel. Now you could use this as a background of a card. Or you can cut them apart. Either way, it's going to look pretty. This was quite a trend a few years ago in stamping. Probably about 10 years ago, everybody's making postoids. And um, they had little software programs you could get to turn your photos into post little postage stamps. And it's really, it was really a fun, um, a fun look. I still love the look of it. Now, instead of cutting these all apart, a fun thing to do is to use your scoring board. And if you don't have a scoring board, I'll share with you how I used to do it before I got a score pal. Um, you just take your little, either a pattern tracing wheel, or here I've got this little cutter bee. Um, it's a cutter bee bug. It's a piercing bug. And um, you can just roll it along a foam mat, or if you have a score pal or a, any kind of scoring board that has grooves, you can just go ahead and um, roll it right down a groove. Just make sure you keep your scoring B up and down, straight up and down, and you won't damage your board. I've even used the double ones in the um, the two side by side channels. Um, and I've had good luck with that, but um, I did hear from the lady from the design score pal that you could end up damaging your board if you're not absolutely perfectly careful. So I just wanted to throw that out there, but also let you know that it may not be the best solution. You may end up damaging your board if you're not careful. So I just thought, wouldn't that be cute to take off a couple of these? And um, what I think I'll do, just kind of tear them on the dots here so it kind of looks like postage. And I think I'm going to put that, that's a little big to go in the center. I think actually I'll just tear off the little Peace and Harmony one and use that for the sentiment on my card. And, or I could have used my stickers, but that just looks kind of cool that way. Maybe wrap a little ribbon on and put a little medallion in the center or something. Um, but there's the technique anyway. You can make your very own postage stamps for your craft projects, and it's just a lot of fun. I'm just going to show you really quick how the triangle ones look, because that's a neat look when I, um, I bought some old stamps once to use in my crafts. And um, I got some that were from like Zimbabwe that were these really cool... Um, triangular shapes and I and there were some that were hooked together still so I saw them in a pattern like this and I thought well that is just cool looking and it would look really great um you know on a card and I wanted to make kind of some of my own so that I could use them without worrying about you know wasting them or not but see and then you would you know with a mask in place you would stamp over them and then you know pierce in between so I can do that like that I, I, took a, I took a Sharpie, a really fine one, and I um, put a line down the six at the six inch mark so that whenever I needed something, I just needed to line up something quickly, I could do that. So that's why I have one pink line. It just makes it easier for me to um, line things up when I'm scoring a box or something that doesn't necessarily have a, um, a measurement that I can go by. But, I mean, these are so fun and quick and easy to make. You can make them with the kids. Um, make them for fun. Make up a bunch to use at a later time. 
It's just so easy. And that is what I call reverse masking. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!